in this video i'd like to tell you guys a really interesting story from the history of mathematics and that is how non-euclidean geometry was discovered okay and if you do not know much about mathematics and you're thinking you know well why should i you know watch you know this video about math well uh, you know, the reason why you might, uh, you know, want to stick till the end of this video is because uh, that's where Einstein got his ideas from, like the, uh, you know, his relativity about, uh, you know, kind of space-time bending and not being linear and, you know, warping and all that stuff. It comes from these uh, things I'll be talking about in this video. So, um, if we... Uh, I'm sure you know that, uh, you know, Greeks, ancient Greeks, um, you know, their, you know, kind of area of mathematics was geometry. Okay, so uh, Euclid with his elements uh, pretty much gave us, you know, geometry. Okay, he systematized it, uh, you know, presented it uh, in a, you know, logical manner. So... Uh, Euclid, a mathematician from ancient Greece, uh, lived uh, 2,000 years ago. Uh, Euclid and Archimedes and Eudoxus and uh, you know some other characters uh, such as uh, Pythagoras and Apollonius, you know they, uh, you know discovered incredible uh, you know geometric results. Okay, and uh, for this particular video we focus on Euclid. Okay, so Euclid. Uh, you know, wrote his elements. Uh, and by the way, uh, before I forget, uh, it's kind of interesting, Abraham Lincoln, uh, you know, the famous, famous uh, American politician, uh, when he was young, he had this time when he locked himself up in his room for like two weeks and he studied Euclid's elements. Like he just wanted to, you know, really, really get it. And, you know, he uh, succeeded. Like he you know, felt pretty good about it. And he was actually a pretty decent geometer, okay, believe it or not, Abraham Lincoln. So Euclid's Elements, all right, uh, you know, it's a surprisingly hard book to read, okay? Uh, it was written a long time ago, and, you know, mathematics uh, in our day is, like, way, way more difficult, way, way more ab abstract. But, you know, reading Euclid is pretty tough, okay? It's like, you know, first couple of pages are, you know, not so bad, but, you know, then it kind of, it, it gets tough pretty soon. Uh, so, uh, at the beginning of his book, you know, he has these, uh, you know, postulates, uh, you know, just kind of axioms, you know, those basic results, uh, you know, which are sort of, uh, you know, fundamental um, assumptions of mathematics. And one of them is his famous uh, fifth postulate, which says that, through one point, uh, you can only draw one line parallel to a given line. So, uh, you know, you have a line and you have a point, and through this point, there can only be one line parallel to this line. Pretty, uh, you know, almost common sense, okay? So, you, you know, you have a line and you have a point somewhere outside this line, and through this point, you can only draw one and only one straight line parallel to this line um so you know it seems pretty straightforward um you know just uh however he could not prove it okay um he kind of you know did some um you know gymnastics uh some math, math you know juggling he kind of tried uh some arguments but he, he euclid did not prove his fifth postulate in the elements and for many, many hundreds of years, you know, mathematicians uh, struggled with it. Uh, you know, it was kind of, uh, you know, it made sense. It kind of seemed true. But, you know, the question is, well, why can't you prove it to be true? I mean, it's such a, you know, basic result. You know, why, why not prove it and just kind of, you know, be done with it? And it was kind of bugging some people, you know. So, uh, Gauss the greatest uh, German mathematician and arguably the greatest mathematician ever, uh, Carl Friedrich Gauss, uh, essentially, you know, picked up this uh, ancient, uh, you know, concept and uh, said, well, you know what, this is incorrect, okay? 
you know, Euclid's, uh, you know, postulate that, you know, there can only be one line is mistaken. So uh, you can have more than one line going through it. Uh, in fact, you can have infinitely many lines going through it. And, uh, you know, different incredible geometries uh, sort of come as a consequence of this. So you, know, you can have lines which are kind of, uh, you know, bent towards the line, which uh, results in, you know, one type of geometry. You can have line which is exactly parallel or I mean kind of yeah straight ish line or you can have a line bending away from your uh, given straight line so uh, you know these three uh, you know geometries uh, were later described as uh, you know hyperbolic hyperbolic and Euclidean so uh, you know there was Gauss uh, there was also Lobachevsky uh, an incredible Rus Russian mathematician who worked on you know, around the same time as Gauss, which was like, uh, you know, 200 years ago uh, in University of Kazan. And, uh, you know, he pretty much came up with the same result as Gauss, um, you know, that there is actually an infinity of lines, uh, you know, parallel to a given straight line passing through one single point. Um, and there, there was uh, a... Hungarian mathematician Janos Bolyai, who also, uh, you know, discovered uh, similar results uh, roughly at the same time. It's kind of incredible how, you know, three different people living in different parts of the world, uh, you know, pretty much discovered the same result, you know, really, really amazing. And, you know, Gauss, he learned Russian, he learned the, you know, the Russian language, you know, which is not easy, uh, just to be able to read Lobachevsky's work, I know, pretty incredible. Uh, so that's uh, essentially, you know, the geometric foundation of uh, Einstein's, uh, you know, relativity, like this whole business about, uh, uh, you know, black holes and uh, warp space time. It's all uh, very heavily based on non-Euclidean geometry, but it's not. Yeah. So Gauss, um, you know, once he discovered these concepts, he uh, also worked uh, you know more on you know this concept of curvature you know what does it mean uh, you know for something to uh, you know have curvature and how you measure it and Einstein used uh, these concepts heavily and finally the last uh, you know greatest uh, you know you can call them you know classical non-Euclidean geometers was Bernard Riemann um, you know Riemann discovered so many incredible things uh, you know there are these in physics, you know, these so-called Maxwell's equations uh, and, you know, pretty much everything Maxwell talked about, Riemann uh, discovered before Maxwell. So they should really be called, uh, you know, Riemann's equations. Uh, uh, Maxwell was not really, or, uh, you know, did not really discover anything original. Uh, Riemann discovered it before him. Uh, at least, uh, you know, that's what uh, John von Neumann says, one of the greatest mathematicians ever. Uh, so... Uh, that's uh, non-Euclidean geometry, uh, essentially, you know, geometry which rejects Euclid's fifth postulate. And, uh, you know, it's a really fascinating world. And a lot of this, you know, modern astrophysics, you know, that you know, deals with black holes and stuff like that, uh, really uses a lot of these concepts discovered by Bolyai, Lobachevsky, Gauss, and Riemann. So really uh, worth your time to check this stuff out in more detail.